Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by the Union Capital Corporation. Good evening, New Orleans, and you are watching Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher, and over the next hour, we're going to have a fantastic time looking back at the career of a New Orleans icon. Legendary sports writer Pete Finney joins us on the program. and. Got to tell you, folks, uh, since we, we were putting this show together, I can't tell you how excited I was to have the opportunity to be able to uh, sit, next, sit next to uh, this gentleman who has seen so much in New Orleans sports. And uh, without further ado, Pete, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. I certainly appreciate the time tonight. You, I'm happy to be here. Pete, let's, let, let's get started. And, and I guess, first of all, first thing is... Um, uh, talk a little bit about your career and your background. Uh, how did you get involved uh, in, in sports writing? Well, I was on the high school newspaper at Jesuit, uh, they, the Blue Jay, they called it, and I uh, enjoyed writing right, right from the start. And uh, it just so happened I got a job right almost right away. I got out of a Jesuit in 1945, and uh, my dad knew someone who, who told him that uh, the States was looking for someone. And I went to see this the, the fellow and all, I had a job. And they gave you the job? Got, got a, I mean, it was, just, it was just there, you know. And uh, it was, I was very, very fortunate. As, as soon as I got out of Jesuit, I went right into the job at, like, uh, at, uh, at well, on the state side. Right, it was the state side of the state side at the time. Right. Correct. Now, you you also were uh, right after that went into at the Loyola as well. So you were working at the state side at the same time you were going to college. Correct. And Correct. And, and, and talk about your time at, at, at Loyola. Well, and, and then then I was at the Picayune. Well, uh, well, the um, well the state side until the, 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 until I went to the Picayune. Right. Until it became the Picayune. And uh, I was just, then I started, I went from covering high school ball to LSU. Mm -hmm. from, from high school to, to covering LSU, but before you obviously became an editor and a columnist. Correct. Right. Correct. I forget when I started, what year I started writing a column, mm -hmm. but it was back then in the late, in the 40s. Right. You know. um, as, as far as, as doing that, coming out as a high school student, right, in, right into, into newspaper writing, how mm -hmm. was that? It, I mean, it was easy. I can't even, it just, it's a, <laughs> some of it's a blur to me still. And a lot of things are a blur to me. <laughs> right. right. But uh, it was, uh, it was easy. It, it was, it, I don't, I, I, I keep telling people this. I don't feel like I've worked as long as I've been. It, it's just a pleasure to do. Yes. And uh, it's, it's not like a job. Right. So. Uh, your, your time at Loyola, you, you split time, obviously, between, between writing uh, for the paper, but also uh, uh, you were involved at Loyola as well. Did you do any writing at Loyola? I, well, I, I didn't work uh, the Reveille. I didn't write for the Reveille, mm -hmm. but I uh, I did uh, you know some. I, mean, I started covering. I was covering sports, and I was right. covering Loyola. Co covering, uh, in fact, I was coaching Loyola and covering Loyola. Co coaching Loyola basketball, right? The, co yeah, coaching the Loyola the the the, uh, the junior team okay. at Loyola, which was and, the which was the freshman team. Yeah, freshman team. And and, and how did that come about? I, they had nobody else. Had nobody to else to do it. So, right. so they asked you to do it, and, 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 I, it? and I enjoyed. Right. You know, I always enjoyed basketball, right. and uh, so it was. Uh, those days are so different. You right. Know, no, no, right. They, they they were. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, how was it uh, again as a you're walking into into working for a big time newspaper just mm -hmm. out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that that was that was something that was maybe a little, was that something that was a norm for the times or was that maybe a little bit different? Well, I think it was it might have been normal. I mean, right. you know, Hap was Hap Glaudy was, was right. writing and and Buddy Buddy was there and I, I was very close to them and uh, Hap was at the item right. And uh, and Buddy moved around. He, he was Picayune too. Buddy was Picayune, and uh, 
we all we all, we're all friends and we shared a lot of stories. Yes. It was, it, but they didn't have as many teams then. Like yeah. high school today, there's a I don't even know how many teams are in the New Orleans area, but it's, it must be triple to what it was back then. Right. You had the Catholic League and the Public League, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't. It might have been when I was covering high school sports, you might have had maybe maybe less than ten teams that had teams in the high school right. uh, uh, area. and uh, But uh, today, it's just, it's amazing right now. No, it it's really just, is. It, and, and, and honestly, back then, it, it was prep football. It was prep sports that really dominated the sports landscape here in oh, New Orleans, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, they, I'll tell you what, that, there was a golden era, really, because I remember at, at City Park Stadium, Ted Gormley Stadium, that uh, there was one game I remember that had 40,000 people. And 40, it was just, oh, it was, it was incredible. I think it, it might have been a Holy Cross Jesuit game. I forget uh, what year it was. But uh, it was amazing the crowds they pulled. For track meets, they used to have the senior prep track meet would get 10,000, sometimes 15,000 at City Park Stadium. It was amazing. And, and, and of course, back then, uh, uh, a lot of the athletes, as we revere uh, uh, pro athletes now, mm -hmm. people revered prep athletes back then, didn't they? Oh, no, no question. Yeah, you know, the John Pettibon, Richie Pettibon. Yes. And you had Les Kennedy at Warren Easton. And uh, I mean, they were just uh, uh, it, it, a, great, a great place for fans to go as uh, college in. Yes. And the, all the pictures on the wall, mm -hmm. and it, it's really amazing. It's, uh, all uh, there must be, they might have a hundred pictures on the wall at, at College Inn, and uh, it, it, every play has a story, and uh, that was re and th that was really a golden age, and it, it expanded, and it, it was and now it's 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 alive. Yes, I mean sports in New Orleans is. Oh, it, it's great. It's amazing, isn't it? It, it really it's is. A, especially post Katrina. Right. How how and again I truly believe that that sports here in New Orleans, post Katrina, mm -hmm. is one of the driving forces to us coming back. No question. You no, know? no question. And a lot of people doubted that when, right. after Katrina. They right. doubted uh, that this city could would be able to support major league franchises. Right. And, and, and that sports could be could really be part of the uh, of, of the uh, the fabric of the community again. Right. But but really it's come back stronger than ever. No no question. No question. I remember what the first, I was at the first Saints game, and uh, in, what, when, when was it, 67, and uh, at Tulane Stadium, and it, it was, that, that, that first game was just amazing. And uh, when they introduced Jimmy Taylor, and uh, before the first uh, kickoff, and, uh, and, 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 and this, you know, <laughs> the, the best story of that game was the guy returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. John Gilliam. John Gilliam. Yes. And, uh, Pete Rosell, who was the commissioner of the NFL, came out of his seat, and, and, and he, he got carried away. Yes. And I told, I told, I just mentioned, I said, "You're in a press box. You're not supposed to cheer." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But he, and he, but he can, he couldn't help himself. Right. I'll never forget that. How, how was it? And, and, and if you can recollect. Um, when, when, when this, this city received that franchise, and, and I know that there were a lot of things that went into that, mm -hmm. uh, Dave Dixon was, was a big reason why the, right. the, the city ended up with a franchise, but talk a little bit about, about that and, and, and those times back uh, in, in the middle 60s right. uh, when, when obviously New Orleans was trying to be, to vie right. to be part of, part of the NFL. No one person did, did more than him. He was, he was unbelievable. And uh, I mean, he, he, before, uh, well, Tulane Stadium, without, I'm telling you, Tulane Stadium was vital to, to get New Orleans out of the launching pad because the stadium was there. They had a stadium for, for the Saints to play in. Yes. I mean, an 80,000 seat stadium. Right. And uh, it was tailor made. And uh, Dave did a great job campaigning to, 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 to bring. Pro, pro football. He got Sunday football at Tulane Stadium, which nobody thought Tulane, you, you, there was no, Tulane Stadium was closed on Sunday. Yes. Dave talked, to, he got the Board of Supervisors to agree to allow Sunday football at Tulane. And that broke, uh, that really broke a, 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 a it, it just set the bar higher. Yes. And it, it without that, they, they wouldn't have gotten it going. And, right. and, but he was a great diplomat, the way he handled things, and uh, and then the, the, the way he brought the Superdome here after, you know, when 
Tulane Stadium, and, and he was he was all the time after the, you know in the early days of the Saints at Tulane Stadium, Dave was already talking about thinking about a dome stadium, and he sold it, and he was fortunate to have Governor McKithen, yes. and they got along well, and uh, they were two great salesmen, and uh, they did a great great job. There's no doubt when, when you look at what Dave Dixon was able to do uh, in, in terms of, uh, of bringing professional sports here, really kind of starting with the AFL, right? Trying to bring the exactly. American Football League here exactly. first. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Because there was a fight between the leagues, obviously, to, to be able to get in to certain cities. During that time, right. New Orleans was the queen city of the South. No question. And, and, and was wanted by not just the AFL, but the right. NFL. Right. And, and you see, Dale got, and he got uh, Earl, uh, well, Earl Long, but um, uh, McKithen? Uh, 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 Boggs and... and uh, oh, yeah, Hale Boggs and F. Abbott and Abe. And A. A. Bear. I yes. mean, and he, he, he knew how to... He, he was a great... Dave was a great salesman, he, and he got the, the, uh, the politicians involved, got the city behind them, and he was he was, a, he was amazing, mm -hmm. amazing guy. Long before the, uh, there were pro football in, in, in Tulane Stadium, there were Sugar Bowls. Yeah. And, and the Sugar Bowl was an That's iconic event, no and, and, and again uh, dominated in the early years. Right. LSU and Tulane were, were involved in those early games. But Correct. Talk, talk about the Sugar Bowl and what it meant to this city, and maybe see your recollection of some some of the some of the players and games uh, that that really made that what it is. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I forget the first Sugar Bowl I, I saw, but it might have been in in the late '30s, and. Uh, but the Sugar Bowl was amazing, and uh, it was one of the early bowl games. The Rose Bowl was the oldest, yes. but the Sugar Bowl was there, and it, they had great teams, and they were very fortunate in, in, in matchups. TCU played LSU one game. I think it was three to two, mm -hmm. something like that. They had it was it was crazy, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was amazing. Uh, at, you know, on on New Year's Day, and at uh, that really got, it didn't get two lanes, the two lane stadium was, you know, went way back, mm -hmm. but the Sugar Bowl coming there, I think in 35 was the first right. year. And uh, it just took off and uh, it, it's, it's just, it's been amazing. And that, but I tell you, without, without two lane stadium, the Saints, you know, they, they would still be here, but they got them going because yes. the Saints had already made 8,000 seat stadium. Yeah. And, uh, Largest steel stadium of its time at that, no, at that time. No, no question. And, and an incredible place to be, the, the electricity of some of the great games there. And right. Of course, the fans, because it was a steel stadium, the, the right. pounding of the, uh, of the feet on, on, the, on the floor of the stadium, Correct. Making, making a tremendous <laughs> amount of noise. Uh, right. uh, I can remember uh, uh, footage of players going into the hedges. Uh, right. You know, they talk about between the hedges at oh. Sanford Stadium in right. Georgia. Right. But they had hedges at Tulane right. Stadium as well. Right. Uh, right. And, and maybe the old dugouts. You remember the old oh, dugouts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was around until Archie Manning got injured, right? Yeah, uh, in that right around game that time. Yeah, is when they That's got right. rid of the dugouts. That's right. Yeah, but it would be. But uh, back in the in, at, at one time they had the dugouts because the players were in the dugouts because they had those those uh, ground level seats so that the fans could see. Am I right? Co correct. And really, the Saints team when they when they opened for, for, for many many years, as you know, losing records. Yes. But, but the halftime shows captivated the people. I mean, and, and the, what's his name? Uh, uh, I can't. I'm trying to think of his name now. You see, I can't think. Uh, the, the guy put the, the, the shows on right. the halftime shows. Walker, I think. I mean, the guy was he was amazing, and he 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 brought he he was involved in some Super Bowls, okay. and uh, he uh, you know he got Al Hurt and Vols and and, and uh, the balloons. And ostrich, and they put me on an ostrich. That, that's what I understand. And we've got yeah. some photos of that as well. Oh boy, the, the, what, what, that'll be you great. Know, it, it, the, they, they run the ostrich now at the fairgrounds. We, we see that all the time. Right. It's kind of a yearly thing. But right. that was kind of the genesis of it. The, and oh, I think yeah. the people in this city oh, have yeah. fallen in love with it. But even right. back then, right. people went to the games. They loved the Saints. Right. They, they enjoyed, obviously, even yeah. the Saints were the level losers. But you're right. 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 The halftime shows were incredible. Right. Uh, from, from, the, from the balloon races that we saw right. to the ostrich races that you were involved in. Right. How was it riding an ostrich? Crazy. I'll never forget what Wayne Mack was, uh, who was on, on television, yes. and he was on the field when uh, you, you got on an ostrich deal and you couldn't control the ostrich. They, they ran where they wanted to run, yes. and you were in, in this wagon. And uh, 
he, he had it right for Wayne, and Wayne had to jump in the dugout at Tulane Stadium. <laughs> I'll never forget that. You couldn't control the right. Astros. But uh, that was one of uh, uh, Tommy Walker was that's the guy's. That was one of his ideas. And but he had all kinds of things uh, that for halftime, the Battle of New Orleans yeah, one time, I remember one game. Yes. And uh, but th that was really a highlight because the team was so bad. Mm -hmm. It was just people talked about the halftime show probably more than a football game. Yes, no doubt. But. Uh, but this, this, even though in those early years when they were losing, you know, Billy Kilmer was the quarterback, and they had a bunch of old, I say old players, but they had Doug Atkins, who was one of the great players of all times. He had two or three great years with the Saints. Yes. And, uh, but uh, the Dave Saints, Witzel. Dave Witzel. Yes. In, in, in the, you know, yeah. you remember those. Right. I mean, sure. Danny Abramowitz. Danny Abramowitz, right. 17th round draft yeah. choice. But even when they were losing, they, they were they were just they. All you got to do is look at the the the, um, the attendance. Yes. I mean, right from the beginning, with teams that did. They, I don't forget how many years it was. Twenty years before they had a winning season. Right. No. No doubt it was. And and, and again, uh, they they captured the hearts of New Orleanians from from, from day one. And Correct. Actually, a little bit different on, on how players were treated back then as well. You know, I was I was a young kid back then, but <laughs> but we still hear stories of. Uh, players couldn't buy a drink in the French Quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they couldn't buy a meal at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that you know when the players would spend a lot of time, uh, they weren't in the kind of shape they are today right. with the regiment they are today, and they would spend as much time down in the quarter at the watering holes than, than they right. would than they would on, 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 at, at, at training camp. Yeah. Was, yeah. was that how it was? Paint a picture for oh, us. Oh yeah, but they, I mean, they they had some, you know, you had some guys on the Saints who were kind of rough people, and I can't. I'm, thinking of a lot of names. I don't want to mention a lot of names, yeah. but the free-for-alls yes. and stuff like that. Took all the pol took on the police. One guy took on a, two or three policemen one one time. And uh, one guy, I'm trying to think of his name now, you know, shot shot his head, had a, had a revolver and shot through the ceiling at, uh, had a bar room right. in, on uh, on Bourbon Street. And uh that 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 went on, but it was it was part of part of the scene. Yes, but nothing nothing violent, right. you know. But they were beloved, weren't they? Oh, I mean, God, they, they were oh. they were superstars walking around really the stand. Really, you know. I mean, but NFL was in town. Yes, see, and it was just oh, took off. No, no doubt. Yeah, took off. Of course, uh, we, we as as this thing moved forward with the Saints, uh, the, the Saints get get their first round pick back in 1971. Mm -hmm. it was Archie Manning right. coming from Ole Miss? Right. A lot was expected of Archie Manning right. when he came here, and right. of course, uh, he never ever had an opportunity to have a, have a winning season. And boy, I can <laughs> remember as a kid, he was an icon of mine. Right. Okay, but right. but getting beat up constantly. Right. And, well, and at Ole Miss, he was probably as good a college quarterback as you ever had. Running the ball as well yes. as passing it, and uh, it was his mis I say mis in a way misfortune. Not, not a, it wasn't a misfortune to come to New Orleans, but as far as winning games, he, he came to a, sure. a losing franchise. But he caught on, had some good seasons, had some good games. Yes. Not good seasons, but good games. And Archie was he was a, a great guy to cover because. He would throw interceptions, and he'd always answer your questions. He didn't beat around the bush, and uh, he handled himself well. And the way he, w he raised his son is, is, is just is a story yes. that people are living through now. There's no amazing. doubt about it. It's it, amazing. It, is, it really is. And, and again, uh, you know, I think a lot of people take it almost take it for granted that, that, that you know, they are the first family of football, oh. but yet they, they have New Orleans roots. I mean, those, no those kids grew up in this city. No question. You know, they, they deal with the same thing. We've dealt one on, on a daily, day and out basis living here. And, right. And of course, now they've gone on to, to NFL greatness, sure. both of them. I mean, you got two sons who won Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It you is. Know? And the third son, you know, Cooper, you have Peyton, Eli, and then and Cooper, who, who was injured. But uh, he's been around. He's a great guy. Great, just a great family. And uh, it's, it's, everything's worked out. It, uh, it really has. Really. Tom Fears, first coach of the Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, talk, talk a little bit about, about him and, you know, uh, may, maybe your memories of, of those in those initial teams. And, you know, I mean, I can always just remember the, the kind of the scowl on his face on the sidelines right, right, as things were right. going wrong. Yeah, yeah. Your memories. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was, you know, the first head coach the Saints had. He was a great player. I didn't see him play in the NFL. That was before, kind of before my yeah. time. But... Uh, Played for the Rams, didn't he? Yeah, oh, he's a great pat, you know, pass receiver, and uh, 
he had you know some his naturally he coached losing teams yes but uh he, he was good to cover and uh then they just it just took them a, but even when i remember those games they, they, I forget, I, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't give you all the records, but uh, the way uh, the, the fans embraced them, and even when, they, you know, they had, uh, well, a 115 season. Yes. I mean, I'll never, that, that season. That year, that it was incredible. When they won the game, was almost like, I'll never forget the game they won. I think they beat the Jets. They did? It was like win, win, winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes. It was ridiculous. It, it was. But... Uh, the fan, you always had enough fans who stuck with the team, and uh, it was amazing. Yes. It's, it's, the, the fans in this city are unbelievable, unbelievable when the, you look back. And, they really are. Oh. Uh, another another uh, notable coach uh, that, that took over this team, and, and I think the fan base thought that, that we were going to change, we were going to turn the corner uh, as a Saints franchise when Hank Stram, mm -hmm. uh, again, legendary coach, won right. a Super Bowl right here with the Kansas City Chiefs right. when he took over. Mm -hmm. Your memories of Hank Stram. Oh, yeah. Well, he, Hank was his own man, and he enjoyed. He was Mike for that game, that uh, the Super Bowl yes. game, and uh, he uh, he was great to cover. I mean, he, he loved to dress, and uh, he was a good coach. Mm -hmm. He was only here, I think, two or three years. Just two years, yeah. Or two years, huh? yeah, two, right. and uh, but he uh, he was a great guy to to to, to talk to and in interview, and uh, he. Uh, it, it, was, it was a kick he, uh, when, in, uh, when he beat the, when he won that game here, and he uh, Shram beat uh, oh, he, he beat uh, Minnesota. Beat Minnesota. He, uh, Bud Grant was the other yes. coach, and uh, <laughs> he was quoted. He was Mike, and he was quoted. It's, it's like stealing everything. <laughs> everything he coached worked. Yes. The, the next season, he uh, Hank's team played. Uh, Hank played Bud Grant again, mm -hmm. and Bud Grant. Beat him badly, and all Buddy Grant said after the game, "It's like stealing." <laughs> <laughs> he got back at Hank. Yes, you know, he did. Hank took it all in stride. Yes, yes. But Hank was—he was, he was a great guy. He was a great. You guy. know, it was, it was unfortunate that, that uh, again that, that he didn't get a chance to stay with this team uh, longer. Uh, yeah. Of course, Archie Manning was hurt during that time. Yeah. They went right. through a litany of quarterbacks between Bobby Douglas, Bobby Scott. Right. Um, of course, a lot of people remember that you know uh, Meekum, Meekum, the owner then was worried right. about him spending money. Right. The shag, as, as bad as the Saints facility was, right. is it true he had a great office with a shag rug in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and Meekum was, you know, it was up, he was an up and down owner, but he settled down. He settled down, and uh, and he had just uh, and he he was he had his, his he had some faults, but he, he overall he was good for the franchise, and. Uh, and it, it, it just, it, through all of the losing, I mean, this team, you, you couldn't have a better f a group of fans to support a team that long with losing records. No doubt. It was incredible. It really was. And it really is still today. It is. I mean, it, still, it, still it, today. It, it is. I mean, no. even even when, in, in the years when, when Buddy went with the bags and everything right. else, it was tough. Right. The people still came out and supported right. this team. They right. still lived and died with it. Every Monday morning, it was either everybody was excited and, right. and, and happy about the, the start of the week, or they were down in the dumps because the Saints had, had lost another one. Right. Correct. No doubt. Correct. Um, also, um, you know, as, as you as you kind of fast forward through through the, through the franchise and some of the players that that obviously had played for this for this team, uh, you know, again, we, we look at, at where we are now, mm -hmm. and, and and who would have thought that that after everything that this city went through and everything this franchise went through, that ultimately Sean Payton would become the coach of this team, right? Uh, and 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 of course, uh, ultimately, uh, we all and I don't know if we all thought we would say, it, but we always see this team win a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Talk about that experience for you yourself. Oh, I tell you that, that march he made uh, went, went to oh, I think 2006 to 2009. Yes. Huh? In yes. his fourth season, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, nine. His fourth season, he, and but he when he came, he was very. You could he, you could see he was organized, and he was kind of he had a lot of a lot of cheerleader in him, but he was a serious cheerleader, and uh, he got a, he he really connected with naturally. He connected with the players, yes. and uh, and he knew talent, and uh, he hired some good people yes, around him, and. Uh, but just the progress he made from 06 to 09, taking it, and and you could see the difference this year when he came, when he hit after being suspended for a whole season, how they missed him 
when he was suspended. Absolutely. And uh, no, he, he's a good. He's one of the top coaches in the league. Isn't it? Well, there's no question about that. And he's kept it kept the team on a on a uh, steady course. And uh, he's always looking ahead. And uh, he's uh, he's good. Yeah, he's, he's a heck of a coach. He's, he's good. He's got a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. He and the quarterback are kindred spirits. Yes, absolutely. And uh, which helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the defense this year has done a wonderful job. So, uh, but it's uh, they're rolling right yep, now. Yeah, they, they really are. Yeah. I go back in my mind's eye, and I remember the the, uh, the threat of the Saints leaving New Orleans, heading mm -hmm. to Jacksonville, and I right. remember um, John Meekham and Bum Phillips mm -hmm. uh, getting out of the uh, the helicopter at, at, at the old Gator Bowl, mm -hmm. and uh, who would have thought that, that that a used car salesman from New Orleans mm -hmm. would have been the guy to come in and, and buy this team? Talk about right. Tom Benson, yeah. uh, your, your thoughts on, on Benson, and, and, and how different it was from maybe him, him being here in the 60s and the 70s, and then yeah. Ultimately, yeah. between him and Governor Edwards, uh, coming po po pulling together mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. saving that franchise. Well, he came in and he, he did, you know, he did a good job. He had his problems early, and he, I think, he admitted uh, to himself that he, he, you know, it took him a while to get to get to, into the football yes. mode. See, but uh, he was always a good businessman, and uh, I mean, I think he made some some w when things went bad for him. Over in the, when the Saints had problems, and he was talking about going to San Antonio yes. and stuff like that. He uh, and I think he looked when he looks back on it, he knows he made he said some things he shouldn't have said. Yes. And uh, but Tom settled down, and uh, I mean right now he's just uh, he's on top of the world. He's he's solid right now. The way he's handled his his money and everything, handled his life. Got a, got a nice wife, a great wife, yes. family, and uh, he's uh, he's and he's a big big plus for New Orleans, no question. I there, mean, there's no doubt. He's no, he's, no he's definitely turned as far as public opinion is, is concerned. He's, he's turned it around. Unbelievable. Ricky Jackson, <laughs> Hall of Famer. You 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 also were, were up in Canton uh, oh, during when when he was yeah. inducted. You got right. uh, the uh, Dick McCann Award mm -hmm. uh, for for uh, from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Your memories of Ricky Jackson, the Ricky, Dome Patrol. Ricky Jackson had that that whole that, that all those linebackers. I mean, you know, those other three guys with Ricky, right. but Ricky was he was a, a, a linebacker apart. I mean, he was a great great player, and uh, you talk about you know a, a team that you really went to see the defense play, and uh, and Ricky handled himself well, and he was Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Didn't he? He never like got hurt. And he was an amazing player, yes. an amazing player. No doubt. Before we go to break, I'd like to, to step back uh, for one more moment. And the, your thoughts on the day Archie Manning was traded. I mean, that was a, oh. a, a huge day here in New Orleans. Uh, he, yeah. he, was, he was beloved in this city. Right. Uh, right. You know, there was a little bit of controversy between him and Snake Stabler on mm -hmm. whether Bum Phillips had had some history with Stabler back then. Right, right. Uh, your recollection of that day and, and, and what Manning had meant to the franchise. And you know what struck me about that, Pete, was even in, in, in knowing that he was leaving his family, moving on to Houston, which mm -hmm. again was in worse shape than the Saints were back right, then. Right, right. He uh, was such a class individual through right. it all. Right. That's the word for him. You, you said it, class. He, he never, he had more downs than ups. Because his, his high school career, I mean, that college career at Ole Miss was all positive. Yes. He came here, even though he had some great games, he was with a losing team. But he never handled himself badly. He was always there for you. Know, I'm, I'm talking from a journalist mm -hmm. standpoint. He was there for you. No excuses. He took, took blame. And uh, he's just a good guy. And you could see the family he raised. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, he's a great story. But uh, Archie Banning was just uh, unbelievable. And uh, I mean, he still is. So that's how the city's been so fortunate, you yes. know. The Gleason story, yes. that, that story, it, 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 that's an incredible story. It, the it really is. Story. It's funny, and, as we go to break, you, you mentioned that he's a good guy. And I remember reading either your column or, or one of the other columns in the paper in 1982. And one of the things that he said was he'd like to be remembered as a good guy. Oh sure, and and and, 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 and he, he has been. And sure, oh he's and, and you could see it in the, in his in his kids, but it's uh, the city's been blessed. Yes, and, and very blessed to have this gentleman here, 
Mr. Uh, Mr. Pete Finney, legendary sports writer here in New Orleans, uh, joining us here on Inside New Orleans tonight. We will take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll continue the conversation with a New Orleans icon, Pete Finney. We'll talk a little bit about the LSU Tigers, the Tulane Greenway. We'll talk about the NBA from, from the Jazz to the ABA and the Buccaneers. So, New Orleans, don't go far. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Stay tuned. My name's Reggie. Just recently, my wife and I took in her sister's children. And we already had four, so I went from becoming a family man to a man with a bigger family. <clears throat> now, you can't eat love, so I don't know how I'm gonna feed them tonight. How was that, Reggie? I think I look more like Denzel. That's cold, man. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, live. our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, Direct TV, and over the air broadcast on Channel 32. You know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look. I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Hi, we're Ola High, and you're watching WLAE TV. In the search for beautiful people, music that moves, and real culture, America, there's only one LA Coast. Go Coast Louisiana delivers the treasures of the Gulf fresh to you. I think we need a bigger boat. Sundays at 8.30 p.m. on LAE. Welcome back. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. My name is Eric Asher. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. It is absolutely my pleasure to have a New Orleans icon with us, Pete Finney, legendary sports writer. Pete, uh, once again, thanks for being with us. Certainly appreciate your time Thank this you. evening. You know, um, I'm obviously growing up a big sports fan. I can remember back in, in 1974 when the, um, the uh, NBA awarded the city their, their first NBA franchise, the New Orleans Jazz. And, um, of course, the color scheme, the nickname, everything that went along with that, it, it just really reflected what our community was mm -hmm. about. And, you know, the sugar on, on, on uh, let's say the cherry on top of the ice cream was when they traded for Pistol Pete Maravich. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Pistol Pete and 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 uh, your memories of Pistol Pete and, and and you know we could we can really start back to his time at LSU. Uh, mm -hmm. You you know you right. uh, if you would tell some of your memories of, of LSU and and Pete and then we'll kind of talk a little bit about him in the pros. Well, at the, Pistol Pete, I remember the first interview I had with his father, Press Maravich. All he talked about was Pistol, and he said, "Wait, till, uh, and this is him talking now. Wait till you see my son." You've never seen anything like him. And he went on and on. I said, I'm t t saying to myself, I said, man, this guy, I mean, he's putting pressure on his kid. I said, his kid can't be that good, you know. And uh, well, then you saw Pistol. And then when you look at, if you look at film of Pistol Pete, I mean, from, from the time he, or I'm sure when he was early in high school, throughout his college career, it stands up with anything as far as ball handling. Not, you know, he didn't. He, there, there again, didn't win championships. Yes. What, but 
as, as far as a, a complete, I say complete showman, there was never been anything like him. His, his film hangs up today with the guys who are playing the game today. He, he's, he was with them. I mean, yes. what he could do with the basketball was unbelievable. No, I would agree. I mean, really kind of set the stage for a lot of things we're seeing today no that question. he was doing back in the 60s. No question. And that's how far, that's there's New Orleans, how far you bring up this yeah. name, the Pistol Pete, yeah. Archie Manning Pistol. Right. So lucky. Yeah, know? oh no, uh, there's mean, no doubt about it. Right. Uh, you know, not just as, as great ball players, but great individuals exactly. as well. Exactly. Because there's no doubt. And of course, uh, you know, Pete, uh, the, during his time at LSU, freshmen were not allowed to play on, on the varsity. Right. And, and, and your, your recollections of the old cow, uh, the old Cow Palace, I believe is what they used to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. and of course, from what I understand back then, uh, the, the crowds would come for the freshman game. Right. And then they'd yeah. empty out, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh definitely. That, there's no question about that. I, I remember I was I went to some of those games when they went to see the freshman team, I mean, to, to see Pete play. And uh, But Pete was just from the, from the get-go, he, he was just, he was an amazing player. A little crazy. He was. He was a crazy interview. He believed in you know the, the people, guys coming from the moon and everything. <laughs> yes, he did. But he uh, he was a piece of work, and uh, but uh, he was a great, great. I mean, a great showman on the basketball court. Really, really good. And, and really gave that franchise, even though uh, oh. again, uh, an opportunity to really take roots in a city that honestly had loved the Saints. Exactly. Because this is, and it's still a football town. Yes. You know, it's, you can't say New Orleans is a basketball town. But Pete did, I mean, contributed to it becoming a pretty much of a good basketball town. There's no question. Because of the way he played the game yes. and everything. So, uh, no, no, he, uh, Pete, Pete was a big plus to, to the city. You know, there was a, there's an old story that's, that's told over and over again about um, uh, the day that we had one of our our, our, our regular, I guess our, our floods back then, and we had mm -hmm. a big rainfall, and, mm -hmm. the, and the Jazz were taking on the Los Angeles Lakers right. at, at the Superdome. And if I remember correctly, Pete had to be actually, uh, uh, had to get in a P-Rog in his subdivision and, and actually float it out. I believe Harry Lee was the sheriff back in Jefferson Parish then. <laughs> I remember that. I think I remember yeah, that and, and, and actually put him in, in, in a squad car yeah. and got him down to the dome in time right. in time for the game. Right. Uh, and and, and if, if I'm not mistaken, one of the largest crowds in the history of the I, NBA. I couldn't. I was at that game. I could not believe how many people were in that stadium, in that uh, arena that night. It was amazing, amazing. But it was another another yeah incredible moment, really. <laughs> also. Um, Pete, uh, I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh, 63 points against the New York Knicks. Is that right? I, something I'm, right up in there. Like it that. was over 60. Oh, right. And right. and of course, uh, I can remember as clear as day the uh, the, the the footage uh, or the pictures in, in, in the Picayune that time of Pete uh, going baseline and and, and Walt Frazier kind of amazed where he got turned completely around. Uh -huh. But uh, just just an, a, an amazing showman and right. an amazing player right. during that time. Well, he drove Walt Fraser crazy. I mean, uh, just trying to, you know, uh, you, you talk, it was great talking to players after they played against Pete, players who had to guard him and uh, trying to find out where the ball was. It was amazing. You, you, you got good quotes from players who played against Pete. Did they have a tremendous amount of respect for people? Oh, yeah. Oh, you had, you had to. Oh, yeah. What a coup yeah. for that franchise to get him from the Atlanta Hawks, huh? Yeah, I mean, I know. The, the, you know, I mean, yeah. who would have? I mean, really, I mean, I who would have thought it would? But it yeah. really, really kind of put the, that team on the map. I don't know if they could have gotten the uh, with, attendance and the with, love, with, right? If they wouldn't have had Pete had, on that Pete. team. I know what you mean. I, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, he was a Pete was an asset. Yes. Oh, he was. An he asset. was. No question. And 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 then of course, uh, you know, some some really tough moves that were made by this team. Of course, they were they were they were they were probably their at their best the year that the, the la Pete's last year. And uh, of yeah. course, when, when he hurt his knee, they were on their way to a playoff. Yeah, run, and he got hurt. Yeah. And he got hurt against I believe against the Buffalo Braves. Right. If I'm right. not mistaken. Right. Putting the th throwing the pass between his legs mm -hmm. at a half court, mm -hmm. and, and of course injured there. Yeah. But uh, and, and of course that kind of changed the fortunes for this team as well. But right. Pete, uh, would you agree with me, this team, this team, well, well, the, the games were well attended. Oh, it, 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 was, it, it, it wasn't that, that, that there was apathy with the fan base during, no. oh, during no. this time here. No. Uh -uh. Oh, no. I mean, Pete was a drawing card. I mean, he was, oh, boy. He was, he was something else. You know, and, and when he passed away, they found out what kind of a heart he had and everything. That was an amazing story. It really is. That how he, what he overcame, you would never think, because he was, you know, a, a dynamo competitor. And, uh, 
but that he was able to last that long and uh, without, you know, say dying early. Yes. And he was, he, boy, he, he was something else, something else. That franchise trying to put itself on the map, trying to get into the playoffs, made made some moves. Louis Chaffel was the general manager. Yeah. Barry Mendelson, I believe, was was the team president during mm -hmm. that time. And they reached out to, to the Los Angeles Lakers and they picked up a guy named Gail Goodrich. Yeah. And everybody was excited about Goodrich and Maravich in, in the same backcourt. Mm -hmm. Your memories of that. Oh yeah. I, mean, I remember Gail when Gail Goodrich, they gave a lot of two number one picks. <laughs> yeah. And, and one of those picks was Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson, that's, yeah, and uh, which was... <laughs> Imagine if Pete and Magic would have been in the same back I know, court. I know. Yeah, that, it, that team would have went nowhere. No, you're right. Just so, uh, you know, when you think back, uh, I know, going, going to football for a second, that uh, LSU tried to get him, uh, John David Crow. Yes. If they had been able to sign him, he would have been on the LSU team in the same backfield with Jimmy Taylor and Billy Cannon and John David Crow. Amazing. It, it could have happened, yes. see. And, but when you think of the athletes that have come through, you know. Right. And, uh, but, uh, man, I'm telling you. You bring it back things that I'm yeah. forgot. I forget a lot. <laughs> Pete, also the ABA was here in New Orleans. Oh, the yeah. old Buccaneers. Yeah. And, and what's amazing is when you look at, at at the at the players that played for the Buccaneers. First of all, great individual players. Right. But but also a lot of those guys went on to be great coaches in right. in, in, in the NBA as well. I remember Babe McCarthy. He was a coach. Yes. He was fun to be around. He was he was a, a piece of work. Him a pistol, and. Uh, he, uh, the Buccaneers, they, they did, I don't know how, how many years were they here? They were only here, uh, uh, I think, two not, or three years, not, that, not long. But they, 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 were, they were a winning team, they, though. They, exactly, exactly. Yeah, they were exactly. actually going to, I believe, the Western Division Finals at one time. Right. Uh, and, and they lost there. And, yeah. and ultimately, of course, I believe they, they ended up moving, if I'm not mistaken, maybe to Memphis? I think I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. they moved to Memphis. Yeah. Well, of course, I mean, the ABA was so in flux back then. Oh yeah, then, right. You know, right. but I'll tell you what, the Buccaneers they 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 had a good following. They, they did. They did. They, they, and, they, and it's a really great players. I mean, Doug Moe was was, Doug, was, was Doug a Moe, great player. Right. Uh, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, they, they had they had quite a few players that yeah. that, that people would really recognize mm -hmm. more as, as coaches than, than players mm -hmm. uh, because because of obviously the time. Right. Right. No right. And, and then who would have thought to come full circle? Uh, at, at a time when, when a lot of people didn't believe that this city, once again, could support two franchises, mm -hmm. especially the bad taste that maybe a lot of people had for the Jazz. But, yeah. you know, Charlotte uh, is looking to uh, to relocate, and, and lo and behold, we, we, we end up with the Hornets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, uh, people excited about basketball being back, and mm -hmm. Baron Davis turns into Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're back in it again. And, of course, that <laughs> turns into local ownership once again with Tom Benson and now the Pelicans. Right. Right. So um, yeah, I mean, we've yeah. kind of come full circle. You're right. I mean, every, everything seems uh, eventually falls into place. Uh, you know, we, we've been fortunate. No, we have. And, we, and, and, and now, again, when you look at the young team that the Pelicans have put together. Right. It, right. it looks as though, and, and I guess, Pete, you, we'll find right. out. But it right. looks like they might have a pretty decent season this that, year. I, I like that coach. I think he, he handles them well. Oh, yeah. I think, I think he's done a good job. And, it, you know, it'll take a while to get him moving again. But, I mean, he, he's they've done a good job. Yes. So. And, they, and they, they've, they've really overhauled that roster this season and, oh, and yeah. expect them to be a, a contender in the Western Division. Right. So, which, again, sure. all you got to do, and for basketball, would you agree, all you have to really do is win here. If you don't have an icon or, 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 or a player like a Pistol Pete, right. if you win, people will come out oh, and support. Oh, no, no question. No question. So we'll see. You mentioned John David Crow. You mentioned Billy Cannon. You mentioned LSU. Let's talk about LSU football. And of course, uh, you were there for, for, for Billy Cannon's run. Mm -hmm. uh, t talk a little bit about your memories of, of LSU football, uh, go going back to obviously to some of the glory years. Uh, Paul Dietzel's when, when you covered LSU. Th talk right. about that. Well, he's no. I mean, he made a great uh, change in LSU football when he came in because I think it was in his. Maybe but fourth year, or they won a national championship, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'll never forget it, they won in '58. They were they were unbeaten, untied in '58. In '57, they were I think five and four. So, if he had he and he said it, and I think he's right. Had he not beaten Tulane in the last game, he'd have been fired, and would not have been around for the '58 year because yeah. that was a complete turnaround in '58. And that was a magic season. Everything went right. In 59, they had a better team in 59. 
But one pass, uh, Warren Rabb threw an interception. It, well, it was against Tennessee. They should have they should have beaten Tennessee e easily. Should have beaten Tennessee. Threw an interception, turned the game around, and uh, lost that one game, and uh, w with a better team. And then that. Three years later, I think Dietzel was gone yes. to, uh, to Army. Yes, after uh, saying that he would never leave LSU. Not, and he, he, he made a terrible mistake, mm -hmm. and he admitted that, mm -hmm. that he should have never said what he said. And uh, he left with a lot of more or less enemies yes. in Baton Rouge. But he wound up living in Baton Rouge. He, you know, he just he right. liked the city, and you know, I think he came back as an athletic director. For oh a while. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And he, he, listen, he deserved a lot of credit because he got that uh, the fundraising mm -hmm. deal going. TF, he was a great salesman. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, no, he Diesel was a big plus, a big plus. Uh, so. Some great players at, at, at LSU as well. You mentioned Billy Cannon. You mentioned Jim Taylor. Some of the other players well, that, that, that the you The great remember. thing about the, the team in 58, all those guys were Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Warren Reb was Baton Rouge. Jimmy Taylor was Baton Rouge. And, and Billy Cannon was Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And in the same backfield. Yes. And, uh, but throughout, I mean, it, it, uh, it was, uh, that, that was just a, a magic year, 58. And uh, and now they got you know Les Miles and and, uh, and Saban was there and Saban's gone mm -hmm. and uh, LSU's you know they got it going I mean it's uh, Miles has kept them pretty yes. you know stead steady and uh, he and he, he and Saban will continue to have good good I mean I say you know I say good um, rivalry between yes. the two and uh, but Miles has done a good job so far. And uh, so it's uh, it's amazing. It's back to the glory years again for LSU football. It, it, it is. I yeah. mean, it's you know LSU's got a good team, yeah. and and uh, but uh, and then and, and right and Benson's making right now. Getting back to Benson, he's made all the right moves. He's he's done the right thing. Mm -hmm. The way he's handled his his money and everything, his life, and uh, he's he's a big plus in the city, and uh, it. Uh, we're very, very fortunate. Yeah, we are. Let's talk about, but before, before we move on to, and, and talk a little bit about Tulane, I, I'd like to, to talk about uh, some of your colleagues that, 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 that you worked with, and particularly two, two guys that, that, that have been revered here in New Orleans, Hap Glaudy and, and Buddy Deliberto. Talk, oh. talk about your times with those guys. Yeah. Um, both guys, newspaper guys. Uh, I, Hap goes on to, to television and then eventually to radio, and mm -hmm. Buddy took the, 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 the same path. Same thing, right, right. Oh, I mean, they were great, great guys. I mean, Hap, I mean, Hap was at, at, the, at the item. I mean, he was Mr. Item at the, at the New Orleans item. And he, he was a great guy, good, good writer and everything. And then uh, Bernard was was in a world of his own. And I was like, I was on his show. He said, I want you to come on my show. I got something for the fans. <laughs> and that was the night I'm sitting in, you know, he's sitting right next yes. to me on, on a stool. And uh, he gets, that's the night he pulled out the bag. Yes. And put it on his I remember head. it like it was yesterday. And you know, you couldn't understand Buddy without a bag. <laughs> so he puts the bag on. And to me, I was I started crying. I was <laughs> laughing so much to try to understand what he was saying yes. with the bag. And he spent half of his show that night with the bag yeah. on his on his head. But he Buddy was yeah. he, he was in a um, a league of his own. Yeah. He was yeah. something else. Amazing that that bag ha has taken on a life of its own. And you know, anytime there's a losing franchise anywhere in the country, anywhere, right. anywhere yeah. now, now everybody will, will put will put the bag on. It started right here. Right. With, right. with what was it? A Schwegman bag? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and wait, name for the team? The, the Aints. The Aints. Yes. Oh, I mean, it, it was perfect. And and the Saints got right through that. Right. That one in fifteen season. I'll, man, I'll never. That was. Really, something. Pete, did you ever have a chance to get into television? I mean, you know, again, they, oh, they, they reached geez. out and, and, and they, they talked to Happ and they brought Buddy in. How about I yourself? I would have ended television. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me on tele? Oh no, I, 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 no, no. I, I was on some shows, I think, with Mel Levitt a little yeah. bit, but I, I don't think. I would have not been a hit on T. I don't think so. No, 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 no I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. If they let me on, they'll let anybody on. <laughs> oh, I, listen, <laughs> listen. I enjoy just doing what I'm doing, really. Right. And so uh, Tulane but, has come a long way, and, and you know, 
Tulane, and a lot of people don't realize the tradition of Tulane football and how mm -hmm. great it was at one right. time. Uh, talk a little bit about that. And, you know, I, I think one of the defining moments, moments for, for, for Tulane University in terms of their athletics was when they decided to leave the SEC. Oh, no, no question. No question. Positively. And uh, see, Georgia Tech made a mistake, too, the same thing. Yes. Georgia Tech got out of the conference. But uh, listen, uh, Without Tulane football, I'm telling you, Tulane football was here. They had the stadium was here, and uh, they had some great teams, as you know, before you know, way back yes. when Pil Pilney was there. Before Pilney, mm -hmm. when Clark Shaughnessy coached at Tulane, yes, and uh, then Tulane came upon some hard times, and uh, but uh, I'm anxious to see. Uh, I just hope that it works out the new stadium to, to see how they yes. can, you know, hang in. And they've had some, you know, some tough times, but uh, Tulane with uh, Tulane football has meant a lot to the city. Yes. I mean, the Sugar Bowl, and as you mentioned earlier, but uh, and that Tulane Stadium was a vital c c contribution to the NFL mm -hmm. being here. Yeah. So you can't talk down Tulane football at all. Yeah, I would agree with you. Boxing was huge in New Orleans oh, yeah. at one time, and, and, and we had some great fighters that came out of this oh, city yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, you had a chance to uh, to interview Muhammad Ali uh, when oh, him yeah. and Leon Spinks were in the dome yeah. uh, fighting. T talk about talk about doing uh, having the opportunity uh, to uh, to interview a, a great fighter and, 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 and a really uh, oh. a, a great oh. a great interview. I'm sure he was amazing. I tell you, what one of the my most memorable interview was I was up in. Uh, uh, I think in, Phil, in uh, Pennsylvania, they, they, they were gonna, he was going to come down to fight. Well, the fight uh, I forget who he was going to fight, uh, but uh, the media was up at uh, was it uh, wherever his camp was in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and he he was a great magician, uh, uh, Ali. Right. And he, I, I would have to say, it was they might have had twenty report, not a lot of reporters there, but. Uh, about 20 and uh, he did rope tricks for 20 minutes and, to and told jokes and answered questions but never and I'm telling you he was he, he mesmerized you yes and, and he was but he, the way he handled himself I mean good-looking guy and everything and uh, oh Ali was he was a great interview when, when you caught him in the right at the right time yes. he was great yeah. absolutely great also um, Baseball in New Orleans as well. Baseball, long before there was football, mm -hmm. uh, this was a baseball town, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, the Pelicans. Yeah. Oh, no, no question, no question. That, I'm still trying to get used to the Pelicans. Not, Basketball. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Because I'm kind of old-fashioned right. on that. A lot of people are, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, but they, listen, they, I, you know, well, I mean, I've always thought Pelicans will always mean baseball mm -hmm. to me. Right. But uh, Old Pelican Stadium on Tulane and Carrollton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, I'll, I'll never well, I'll never forget that uh, he he had he had uh, he had finished with the Red Sox. Uh, Ted Williams that was in town. Yes, and he was at at Kirsch Rooney was, uh, mm -hmm. Park, and uh, he had a, he had a, a, a dark a, a blue suit on, and he had French cuffs, and people were there, and they wanted him to, to hit the ball. So he took off his coat, his jacket, and the guy started throwing him, and he hit a ball over the center field fence at Kirsch Rooney Park with French cuffs on. Unreal. I'll never forget. Unreal. Uh, you also had a chance to interview Joe DiMaggio. Oh, yeah, Dima DiMaggio. Yeah, well, at, at, at a restaurant on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I forget what, what the restaurant, Tercy's, I forget the name of it. But he ordered, I'll never forget, he ordered a veal cutlet. And I, I know one thing about DiMaggio, he loved ketchup. The, 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 the veal cutlet disappeared. <laughs> he unloaded a whole, practically <laughs> a whole ketchup? bottle of ketchup onto, onto the veal cutlet. <laughs> it, but then he gets up and he's holding a knife in his hand and, and, and swinging the knife as, as it is a bat. And telling, and telling me, this is what you do with this, and you know, he was t t t talking about how how you become a good hitter and everything. Yes. But he was amazing at that moment, you know, and just. just and, and and really kind of dominated the, uh, the the sports scene, uh, baseball during that time, didn't it? Oh yeah. Here in New Orleans. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely oh. did. Yeah. Um, 
the Dick McCann Award, we mentioned it earlier, mm-hmm. got it from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What, what did that mean to you? And, and I was there for that speech, by the way. <laughs> uh, I think you started off with, did, did you mention that you covered Red Grange, I believe it, did you say? Oh, I think I mentioned some yeah. guy Some guy who played in 1920. Yes, but, of course, uh, we, we knew you the, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for the guy, uh, the guy who played for the... Way back. For the Canton Bulldogs, right? The, the Bulldogs. Yes. Yeah. J- Jack Thorpe? Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Yes, it was Jim Thorpe. Right. That's right. <laughs> and I said I was, uh, I, think I, I think I said I was, I saw him play, which yeah. was ridiculous. Right, you know? right. But I what did that mean to you? Uh, I mean. Uh, oh, that was very nice. I mean, a big honor. Very big honor. But it's like I say, I just, you know, I write columns and stuff. and I don't feel like I've been working all these right. years. I just That's enjoy wonderful. it. And it's, you know. You've, so, you've seen so many sporting events. Greatest sporting event you think you've ever covered? Can, can you? Can you? Can well, you I think we. That? I think of the, as for, with, with one game will always stick out is that is that Halloween night game because you know that game ended on the one yard line. I mean, after he returns that punt, whatever it was, Billy Cannon, right? the Billy Cannon against Ole Miss uh, at the Halloween night. Yes, they were on a, Ole Miss is on the mm-hmm. one yard line at the end of the game, and they kept them out of the end zone. So I think that game sticks out. But then the, the, the other LSU games were just uh, amazing. Hudson had a great game, I think, against Auburn one night. I'll never forget. The earthquake game. That's, that's when it, it, they say, I was there, oh, that was an mm-hmm. amazing situation. But there have been moments, uh, LSU, foot, LSU moments, that uh, really, really something. And, and going back to Tulane, when Tulane beat LSU, I think it was 14 nothing when they beat them. Uh, I'm trying to right. think. Right, no, in, in Tulane Stadium. Who was the quarterback? Uh, uh, it was... Um, was it Miley? Uh, was, Rooney? Uh, um, I, I shouldn't know the guy. I can't think of his name. But they beat, they, uh, LSU beat him. I mean, Tulane beat LSU 14-0. Yes. Right. And it was one of the biggest um, wins for Charlie McClendon, you know, at that time. Yes. And, uh, but, uh, boy... Uh, no, Tulane. Tulane had some had some good teams. Pilney had some had, had some good moments at, at Tulane, and uh, but Tulane football has meant a lot to this city. Yes, no doubt. Any sporting event that or anything that you have never covered that you wish you would have covered? I can't say. You know, one of my favorite events over the years has has been the Masters Golf Tournament mm-hmm. in, in Augusta. I've been, a, you know, several, I mean, maybe 15 of those. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's that's a great event as far as I'm concerned. And in the Final Fours. Yes. Oh, I mean, the Final Fours. We've been so blessed with those. Oh, boy. We've been lucky. Right. Some of the Final Michael Fours we Michael Jordan had, with the last second shot. That's, that's, that's a perfect right. example. Right. I right. Mean, Weber with the timeout. I mean, that, yes. you know, you couldn't have asked for anything better than that. We've been really lucky. No, we have. Lucky. We have been blessed as a sports right. team. Right. And I just hope it works out that they get the Super Bowl that Tom Tom Benson has really campaigned for. Yes. And uh, in what, 18, 2018? Right, 20, yeah, 2018. 2018. Uh, 300th anniversary. 300th anniversary. And, uh, but this, when you talk, if the sports writers voted, the, the world, the, in, the, in the country, it would be in New Orleans every year. I mean, yes. they love to come in here. No doubt. And uh, so uh, I think they should get it. I hope they do. And uh, they deserve to. But uh, it's uh, we've been lucky. We have. Well, I am lucky. Oh. I am lucky to have you for the last hour. And tell you what, it just absolutely blew by. And, and I thank you so much for, well, for, for your time tonight. And, and, and I, know New, I know New Orleans thanks you for so many great columns and so many great memories uh, that you provided us over your career. Thank you. Thank, Finney, you. thank you for being with us tonight. I enjoyed being here. Thank, thank you very much. Thank and you. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight to uh, Inside New Orleans. Remember, there is a rebroadcast of this program on Friday at 10 p.m. Uh, right here on WLAE. You can also catch me on the radio on 990 AM WGSO. Uh, weekdays, 11 AM until 1 p.m. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric underscore Asher. And, and also, again, you can, uh, uh, you can also check out the uh, podcast at ericasher.com as well. Special thanks again to our, to our guest, Pete Finney. Also to the WLEE production staff, Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, my producer, William Hill. And of course, New Orleans, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here again next week on Thursday at 6 p.m. for Inside New Orleans Sports. Good evening.
Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by the Union Capital Corporation.